Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to my series on design for 3D printing. Contrary to popular belief, you cannot 3D print anything, at least if you want a good quality part. You must design your part for 3D printing. In this series, I'm going to provide you with the tips and tricks for designing and printing the best possible part. I'll cover basic topics, as well as dive into engineering and manufacturing. In this part, I'm going to talk about importing and setting up your files. To get a part ready for 3D printing, you need to set it up inside the slicing control software. There are many brands of slicing software out there, and many of them are free. Cura is probably the most popular free one, uh, but my favorite software is the Craftware, which is free for the CraftBot series of printers. MakerBot has their own MakerBot desktop, which is the easiest program to use, but lacks some advanced functionality. Simplify 3D is another one that I use sometimes. It's slightly over $100, but it offers the ultimate level of control over your machine, uh, but lacks some of the easy features of the others. For this series, I'll primarily be using Craftware. However, the software is really irrelevant, since this series concentrates on part design. Slicing programs operate in pretty much the same way. Slicing software can accept many different file formats, but I typically use STLs and OBJs, which can be saved from your CAD software in the Save As or Export command. So then you will import this 3D file by going to Open or Add. It will appear in the orientation that you designed it in, which is most likely in its normal useful position. Now, you need to decide how to orient your part on the print bed. Many times, the part should not be printed in its normal useful orientation. This is most important because this is where you have control over how long and how strong. Generally, minimizing material minimizes time and vice versa. Now, you should always design your part to use the minimum amount of material. That's just good engineering. But there's another type of material that you need to really worry about. And this leads me to my most basic design philosophy of 3D printing. Ready? Here it comes. Always try to minimize support material. But wait, what the heck am I talking about? Support is filament that is added beneath overhangs in your part. Some machines have a different support material, but most low-cost FDM machines, such as these here, just use the same filament in a slightly different way to support overhangs in your part. It snaps off easily, but it's a pain. The main reason I hate support is that support adds time, adds waste, and mars the finish of your part. Parts should be designed and oriented to minimize support wherever possible. Yes, I said that at least once already. Minimizing support generally minimizes time and vice versa. Consider the loads that it will bear, consider the path of the extruder, and consider the faces of the part. And do not forget to consider the support requirements. Remember, orienting your part is where you have control over how long and how strong. Let's look at some examples to see what I mean. A table has a large flat top and four legs. Its top carries a bending load and the legs carry compressive loads. If we orient the table in the traditional manner, we will first need a raft, which is a waste that you need to add in the slicer settings when there is insufficient area of the part in contact with the print bed, or when you have several small parts that need to maintain their relative position, like these table legs here. The four legs of the table hardly have any area at all compared to their height, so they will need material underneath them, which is this wasted raft. Once the extruder goes all the way up all four legs and gets ready to print the tabletop, the filament will have to hang in midair, which is not so good. Support material would have to be added all the way along to support the table, which eventually sits on top of the legs. What a waste! The simple solution to the table problem is this. Print the table upside down. We now have a large flat surface that will stick to the table so there's no raft. And no supports are required because the legs will simply grow out of the bottom of the tabletop. This simple change in part orientation not only produces a strong part, but the one that takes the least amount of time and material. A table is probably the best example of how varying the orientation of the part will dramatically 
cut down on print time, and reduce the material usage. In conclusion, anytime you have a table or bucket shaped thing, orient it facing up, unless there is some structural consideration that necessitates another orientation. Orientation allows you to control how long and how strong. This simple change in thinking will allow you to get better, faster, stronger parts. Remember from the first segment that the printer only prints in the XY plane and that your part needs to be oriented so that its eventual stress patterns lie in the XY plane. This often necessitates splitting your model up into separate parts and assembling it later. But that's another segment. In the next part of this series, I'll talk about some basic design layout considerations and provide you with some examples. I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub Fab Lab. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And what do you want to make?